Well, hello everybody and welcome back to part two on November 4th, 2020 of Cooking with G Bear and we're doing beef stew today. So while I was gone or while you guys were watching my part one, I uh, did some cleaning. I cleaned my cutting board, I cleaned my knives, I washed all the other dishes and stuff that was used and I... Uh, Cut up my potatoes, peeled and cut up my potatoes, peeled and cut up my carrots. So that's all in here and that's getting ready to go into the pot. So let's get that in the pot right now. And I do want to mention that uh, also, while uh, this was all going on, right after I cut off the camera, I had forgot that I was going to be putting in the... Um, garlic and shallots at that point and there was one other step that I forgot to that uh, I didn't mention but uh, it's all part of the the cooking process but let me go through that what I did was I uh, finely diced up the garlic and then coarsely um, sliced up the uh, shallot and then I added that in with two cups of water and then stirred that around and mixed it in and of course the flour that was on the meat uh, mixed with the um, uh, water that I added and turned into a nice gravy. Well, I'll show you that in a second. As a matter of fact, let me do that right now if I can get this thing out of here. We'll bring it over and look down inside there and yeah, got a nice gravy going there. See that? So... That started and it, and it I let it simmer with just the um, the water, the shallots and the garlic in there for that whole period of time. Now I know two cups of water doesn't sound like a lot of water to be adding to this big pot of stew, but there's going to be more liquid going in there. First of all, the potatoes are full of liquid, the carrots are full of liquid, and they're, they're going to release some of that liquid into that sauce and that juice. So um, don't worry about it being too thick and too heavy. If anything, you'll have to thin it out a little bit down the line. Okay, so also the tomatoes are going to have um, the juice, and I add the juice from all of the cans. And speaking of the cans, one of the things you want to uh, pay attention to on cans is I always wash the tops of my cans prior to using them because I'm not going to be able to wash any part of the can after I open it. So I do that now. And the big can of corn, that does not all go in there. Only half of this is going to go in there. The other half is going to be a treat for the chickens. And they sure love that, that corn out of those cans. So right now, I'm going to get these uh, tomatoes diced up and get those in. Now, the celery doesn't go in until the last 15 or 20 minutes of cooking because celery doesn't take long to cook and it'll just get really soft to disintegrate after a while. So I like to have a little crunch to my celery when I'm eating at night. So we'll be doing that in a little bit too. So right now, let me get these tomatoes sliced up. Oh, I better sharpen my knife a little bit. Right. And we're going to just kind of coarsely dice these. like one of those knife commercials, doesn't it? I say, well, my Ching uh knife will cut through anything and then still slice a tomato. <laughs> yeah, anybody who buys those commercials, boy, I, I don't know what to say about you. All right, so last, last one here going. 
and I found this is the uh, the fastest way to do this to dice these up and I figured that three of these really big Romas are just about the right size and consistency that I want for a stew. Now if you're using um, beef steak tomato or something like that or salad tomato they have a lot of extra moisture and seed in them and uh, they get a little bit sloppy. Oops. So I love these flexible cutting boards because now I could just pick this up and dump it all into the pot and that part's done. So let me uh, let me turn this a little bit here. We're going to stir the pot. And now it's time to add the canned veggies. So the first one we'll go in is the canned mushrooms. And I use the uh, I use juice and all. That's one in. And now I gotta get my can opener out. And I'm using uh, green beans. You can use peas also for the green vegetable. I prefer the green beans in there. That's two in. And then lastly, the corn. Now, since I'm going to be only using half the corn, I leave the cover in there because I already cleaned these covers off. I cleaned the tops off. I'm going to use that and to kind of sift the, the juice out of there, the corn juice. And then I can remove that metal cover and get in half a pot of, uh, half a can of my corn. That's about it right there. So now I'm going to give that a good stir. And I'll give you a good look. Here we go. Doesn't that look good? We'll wait till it cooks down a little bit as the tomatoes are actually going to turn the sauce a little reddish color um, to a reddish brown color. And uh, then I will uh, I will taste the uh, the sauce and see how that's going in, in a little while. But that will be on part three. I'm going to show you. Um, I'm going to be doing the last part of uh, adding the uh, um, V8 juice. And sometimes I need to add a, uh, a little bit more thickener in there. But it looks like this one might not need it. It look, looks like this one's doing just fine. So um, I'm going to add the salt and pepper to it to taste. And then... Um, put the cover on, let it simmer for about 40, 45 more minutes after that. And then I'll slice up my uh, celery and mix that in. Let it cook for another 10 or 15 minutes and I'm ready to eat. So that won't be part four. You'll only see part three. All right, everybody. That's it for right now. This is G-Bear signing off.